Hello, welcome to NX After Dark. Today we're going to step aside and take on another um, topic. Last time we were creating a data access library and implementing and testing it. Today we're going to be extracting a few common libraries uh, out of an Angular application project. There's three uh, common libraries that you can almost always extract out from, from an Angular application project and other, also other types of web apps, uh, web app projects. Uh, so let's take a look. So this is based on an article I wrote like uh, yeah more than a year ago called Tiny Angular Application Projects in NX Workspaces. It describes in step-by-step -step and in detail, uh, like the, the reasoning behind it and so on, how we can create an assets workspace library. And next one here, missing a table of content. <laughs> uh, I'm scrolling down, yeah, a styles workspace library. And it's a good and long article because it goes through every step and explains to you how you can try it out and, and make sure that you verify that it's still working as expected. And finally, yeah, the environments workspace library. So we will be extracting all, this, all of these three from the workspace we have already gener generated here. We're working on the Energy Insights uh, application. So I'm creating a new branch here. It's a refactoring uh, extract files, assets, environments, libraries. So we have a freshly generated Angular app here project. And I don't think I have modified anything in it since it was generated. Uh, but now we can extract, like there's not a lot of code in here, but we will extract the assets folder. We will extract the environments files and we will extract the style here into a separate library. So if you have a monorepo, uh, workspace with NX, uh, you can then share these libraries between apps, or even if you have just a single app, it's nice to uh, be intentional about making changes. And you, you really don't want to make a change to your application library um, because yeah, that might break the whole thing. And separate people with separate concerns or separate focuses of their job might um, be like working on sep the separate projects. So at, at a UXer or a, a front-end developer focusing on visual front-end development might uh, work in the styles library or maybe someone creating a component design system or something like that and, and integrating it into your app or uh, and maybe also a designer putting in fonts and icons and stuff here into the assets. Uh, yeah, it'll become an assets library. But I'm, I'm trying to, I'll try to do this quick because I have to go. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's get started. First thing was the assets workspace library. So I actually have some, I'll, I'll be using for uh, convenience here. Let's use the NX console extension for VS code. We will generate an Angular library. We will call it, we'll have it in the shared. No, let's see, we'll have it in, it's not shared between applications. There's only one application. Um, yeah, it is just a single application um, workspace, but I'll put it in the, the, the grouping folder called root and we'll name it assets. Let's see, we need to tag it, NX tags. 
So the scope will be the root scope. So that is the one of libraries for an application. And the type is an assets library. So this is a special library type. You can define as many types as you'd like. This one is a special one because it won't have any uh, JavaScript code in it. So it is a special one and not, um, yeah, a one-off actually, at least in this case. Unless you have a lot of assets, maybe you want to split them into separate assets libraries and share some of them between your applications. That could be an interesting use case. Okay, so we are generating an Angular library, but it's not going to contain any code. So uh, it, it didn't, I guess it didn't have to be an Angular library project then. And like if if the if you had several apps or maybe both a front end and a back end or something, you might use a for example a project scope here. And I could have said project green insights. Maybe it was the app, or maybe it was the API. In this case, it would have been the app. And since there's only one app right now, just a front end, uh, I'm just going to go with these two uh, very common tags. So let's see what we have got. Now we have a library, a root. In the root grouping folder, we have the assets library. But we really don't need JavaScript or TypeScript in here. So we'll delete these two. Sorry for that audio here. I'll turn it down. And We can also actually delete these TypeScript configuration files because there won't be any TypeScript code. We can even delete the, um, the test, just testing configuration um, because we won't, and there won't be any code to test. Uh, we'll delete this one as well. So now we have kind of a clean sheet here. Uh, we we might need I don't know maybe maybe ESLint can also work on I don't know uh, SVGs or whatever we would like to have in here so we might keep that one I don't know <laughs> I don't know if it can do SVGs or or something but I'll leave it for now just in case um, so let's go to our workspace configuration workspace JSON. Let's find our project. Here it is. Let's remove the testing target. Let's keep the linting target for now. No, I guess it's only it's only uh, linting component templates and TypeScript files. So we might as well delete this one as well. Maybe we could find a separate linter for these other kinds of files we want in this library. Uh, let's see. I think we'll also delete the lib folder here. And let's say assets in the readme file for this library. So what do we want in here? We will create a subfolder that's called assets. I know the library is also called assets, but this is to keep the um, kind of the path naming the same as if it was in the original application project. It also tells us that it's a special type of library. Um, and we can start by creating three folders in here. Like you can create anything you want, but maybe we would have a folder for the web fonts. Maybe we would have one for, say, icons. Maybe we would have one for images. And you can fill out the rest yourself. So to have folders in, in Git, we put in these files called the git keep until we have actual files inside of the folders. This way, we can show our colleagues that uh, this is where we put uh, images, icons, and fonts. and uh, 
we probably might even have some inside of, of the application project that we'll extract. Um, so this will be, let's see, let's see. Is there anything here? Yeah, this looks good. The base config looks good as well. Well, it's not going to have TypeScript, so we don't need the path here of mapping. And guest, we don't need, we don't have tests either, so we'll also delete that. Uh, what else has it changed? Workspace JSON. Yeah, we need an entry here uh, for NX to recognize this as a project, even though we don't have any targets for this project. It still has these configurations of the root of this uh, project. Uh, I guess we don't need the prefix, but also the source root of this project, which I think is used to uh, detect if any files have been changed, meaning anything depending on this library will also have to be, like if you do an affected test or an affected build or something like that, uh, yeah, it, it will show up in that uh, dependency graph. NX JSON, yeah, so here we have the project name and its um, its tags that we determined. It, it can be anything, but uh, yeah, let's, um, yeah, these are some of the co more common ones. Okay, so generate assets library. Closing everything again. And let's see if there's anything we can move inside of here. What do we have in our apps project? We have a fav icon, that's an asset. Let's move that down, where should that be? Uh, should actually be here in source, not in the assets subfolder. And this is similar to what we had in the app project. We had the fav icon here in the source folder and we have the assets folder, but now we can delete this assets folder and the git keep file inside of it because we won't have any assets in the application project anymore. Um, yeah, we didn't have assets, but uh, just as an example, let's see if there's anything here in the default app. There is an SVG file here, so we could download that. It's not easy to see, but there is an NX logo somewhere in here. Um, it's an SVG file. I will just be transferring it just a second into the, let me find the project folder here. Do this off screen. Where did it go? Excuse me a second. <laughs> I'm, I lost it. <laughs> let, me, let me get that open again. Uh, it's playing tricks on me. the elusive NX logo in white. Now should turn up here in our assets library in the assets folder as an image. Here it is. So this is the logo. Uh, 
So we have that. Now we need to change something here. Let's see. Let's go to our workspace configuration. Well, yeah, I guess one commit here will say move assets to assets library, assets library. And then inside of the workspace configuration, we'll find the app project. And it should have an assets configuration. Here it is. This is pointing to the old path of that fave icon. Uh, so instead, now we'll, this is the shorthand for a configuration object. So instead of that, we'll have the lob pattern. It's called. So if the app or the build is requesting a fave icon file, uh, we'll Uh, we'll, pass, we'll give it this path, libs, root, assets. Uh, let's see, it's in source, right? Just check. Here it is. Libs, root, assets, source, fave icon. Okay. And then we need, this is where it will output it as part of the build. So it will be the root folder um, of, you know, when we compile the app, there will be a dist folder here and then the name of the project. So the fave icon will be moved to the root of that output um, bundle. So now we can delete this configuration. Now we need to tell it everything inside of assets should also be moved uh, into, uh, yeah, this output folder. So what will that look like? Uh, it will look like this glob pattern. Everything, every file and every subfolder of uh, this assets folder will end up being output to the assets folder in the the output bundle. So after the, com the app is compiled, and this is uh, largely the same as as this configuration, but now we have customized it to our uh, library here, our assets library. This should be it. Let's see. Uh, configure application assets. And how can we try it out? We can try it out by saying NX build. And I think we have a default project of the application. And now usually, <laughs> And uh, now we're at Angular 12. So the production build is the default. Used to be that the development build was default. So that's a nice change. Uh, they were hes hesitant to do it uh, earlier, but yeah, it's a good change. You, you rarely need a development build, but there are cases for doing it like in a development environment where people will do sort of QA work or manual testing or something like that. It can be, or even you as a developer, can be nice to have it in a in an environment where other, like maybe there's some special backends available in that environment as well. With the development build, Angular will do an, some additional checks. Uh, for example, <laughs> the infamous, uh, infamous, um, inf infamous. <laughs> expression changed after check error or whatever it's called. So it will do an additional change detection cycle to make sure that your your app is not uh, changing state between uh, the wrong, <laughs> as far as Angular concern, is concerned, the wrong uh, moments of the, 
the Angular lifecycle. Okay, so now we built this app. Let's see what we're getting. We're getting the Energy Insights app, and we see the Fave icon is here. We also see our assets. Assets are here. Uh, maybe we don't want to get keep files, but I, yeah, that's okay. So now the NX logo white SVG is here. Uh, so let's try to use it. Let's try to use it. So in our application project, we find our app component. And here it was referring to the nx.dev website. Now we'll do assets, images, NX logo white. I think we should do it like this with a slash in, uh, in front of it. So let's see if it actually uh, works, building it. Again. Hmm. I think the I think Angular compilation has become slower in these recent versions, even for basically a hello world app. Okay, so now we have uh, the dist. Let's go inside of here and see what we have. And we could do, I think there's like a package called HTTP server. Here it is. Let's find that NX logo. Is, is it this one? It might be. Let's let's inspect it. Yeah. So as you can see, it's not not from the NX server anymore. It's now from a local image. Uh, so from the static files in that bundle. So mission success. And yeah, you can check yourself that it will also work locally. Um, so refactor use static asset or logo. Very good, very good. That was the assets library. So now we'll move on to the styles workspace library. We will start again by generating a library project. like uh, Yeah, it can be an Angular library project or anything really, because this is another special one. Uh, it's called styles. It will also be in the root folder. And let's add some tags for that one. So the scope is root. It's a one-off library for an application. And the type will also be styles because this is another special library type. It won't have any TypeScript code in it. Hello, Sirkan. Good to see you. Good to see you. And NGCC, go away. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> I hate you, NGCC. Uh, it is going away uh, eventually. Now the final step is we need all li Angular libraries to transition into partially IV compiled bundles. That's going to take a while. Okay, so we generated another workspace library. It's the styles library. And for that, we don't need ESLint. We don't need Jest. We don't need TypeScript configurations. We will call it the styles or shared styles. Or no, not shared. Global styles. Yeah, that's a better name. And delete the test setup here and the barrel file. Delete the generated module file. And uh, what else? Remove this just configuration. We won't have any code to test. Remove the TypeScript path mapping because it, there won't be any TypeScript files to 
map to. And so this one is just the tags. Okay. And we have an entry here in, that's just some formatting. Uh, we have an entry down here for our styles project. Let's go review that. Here it is, styles. So no test target, no lint target, at least not ES lint. We could add a style lint and there's now a, an NX style lint um, executor. But uh, yeah, that's for another time. For now, we'll remove all the targets, but keep the project entry in the workspace configuration. Also remove the pref prefix here. Okay, so now we have generate the styles library. So what can we do? Let's go look in our apps project. Which styles do we have? We have this one and it's this project is using sassy CSS, but doesn't matter if it's one or the other. So for our global styles, we will, let's see, a little bit down here, style source lib, rename it to a partial SAS file, call it global for now. And then we will have an entry. Uh, so not in the lib folder, but in the source folder here, we will have an entry style sheet called uh, index, that's sassy CSS. And this one will then import, uh, or is it still called? I don't know these days, SAS is, is growing up. It now has a use thingy, but I don't know if that works for local paths. Let's see, maybe it will. This is the new module system of, of SAS and Angular Material just transitioned to this module system, but I think it's backwards compatible right now in version 12 for the old sim syntax, which was like so. Um, I'm, I'm not sure this works actually, <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll make an experiment in a moment. Yeah, okay. So global styles to styles library. And now there's one thing left to do in our works. Can you hear me? Uh, I'm having poor internet connection these days. Sorry for that. Um, it said it lost my microphone, but now let me know if you can hear me now again. Hello. And uh, Christopher says hi. Hello, Christopher. Okay, well, I'll take my chance. Yeah, okay, you can hear me, great, thank you. So now let's uh, change this styles path. Uh, so it will now, instead of apps, it's, we're now in the libs folder and we have one called root uh, is the grouping folder and then styles, source, and then it's called index.scss. Then we can split into uh, many partial style sheets if we want to. For now, just this first one called global. Okay. So 
Okay, okay. So let's check if it works. Let's add up or let's start the application. NPM start. Come on, Angular. Here we go. So this is our generated app. Let's find that global file sheet and say background color red. Oh yeah. It works. Sorry. <laughs> Let's revert that. Okay. It definitely works. That's good. Now we have one more project or one more library to extract. We have the assets library, the styles, and now we need the environments library. This is these files. Uh, so let's generate another, uh, let's just make it an Angular library, but it, it could be, yeah, it's just a little TypeScript, so there is not much Angular about it, but let's just reuse the same generator for consistency. This will be the environments, environments library. It will be also in the root directory, and it will have some tags here it will have scope of roots a type of environments this will also be a special library type let's generate this one Sercan is has a post install script that symlinks the sas file into a dedicated node modules namespace folder in order to import it from anywhere, like import my space, my namespace, some styles. Okay, that's a pretty crazy setup, <laughs> but whatever, whatever works, right? Uh, but yeah, there's like Angular has a configuration for. Um, you can also put like shared styles inside of a shared a styles library like this. You will just have to pass it to the style preprocessor paths or something like that in, in workspace JSON. Uh, so in that way, you can also do the add import, uh, but not a namespace. But you can do like the subfolder um, and the name of the partial file. Extracting environments out of the app, yes, because I don't want a library project depending on an app project. So if I need the environments file, I need to have it in a library. There is one caveat to this, and it is that uh, it doesn't really work as a buildable library. And if you have buildable libraries, they must depend on only buildable libraries. So if you're using incremental build, don't do this. And why? Well, because uh, buildable libraries don't support the file replacements, at least not right now. That's only for Angular application projects. So that will work as long as it's a non-buildable workspace library without a separate build target which is what we're going to do now. But if you're using incremental build, don't do this, at least not until tooling is better. Now we have the environments library. Uh, let's see what we're going to do here. We're going to keep all this configuration because we might even want to test it. <laughs> um, so let's just make sure here we have, yeah, looks good. And we have the mapping here. Yeah. 
good. So let's change the readme file. Environments and generate the environments library. And now we'll move the environments files. Uh, let's see, where do they go? Take the files, the environment files, move them into source lib. Oh, I forgot to remove, delete this auto-generated module. And then in, let's see, in index, in the index TS barrel file, we will point to the environment file. And yeah, this, this is where uh, buildable libraries will have a pro problem because we need to, uh, yeah, we need to switch between these two files based on if it's a production build or development build. And uh, yeah, so refactor, also delete this folder up here, which doesn't show up in Git history or Git. Um, so move environments. I really want this. No, 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 no. Okay, <laughs> I can make some nice commits here. Uh, move environments files to environments. It's hard to spell that. Environments library. And then the final thing is the configuration of our workspace. So in our app project, let's look for environments. So here we have the file replacement, but note that we're inside of the app project in the build target, in the production configuration, there's a file replacement. And this is the only one in the workspace configurations. But here, now we need to point to libs, root, environments, source environments, and same down here for the replacement. So when Angular is doing a production build of our application project, uh, when an import uh, is pointing to this file, it will replace it in the build phase for with this file. And this is where incremental build fails us. Yeah, so now configure app for environments library. Okay. And what do we need to do? Yeah, now there there is like let's go into the app because here, oh here in the main file, we're using we're importing the environment file. But now it's in a mapped uh, path. So it will be energy insights root environments. You can see that it is available here. So that was the change. Use uh, environments library. So now everything will work the same as before. And where's an example of you might need an environments library? Well, if you have, let's go to, let's go look at the NGRX docs. Here we go. Let's look at DevTools. Look at that, using the environment here to conditionally uh, configure the store DevTools module. Um, so if we have this, uh, like here in the example, it's in the app module, but we want a tiny app. So we don't want anything like this, uh, any configuration if we can uh, force that into a shell module instead, or 
a configuration module loaded by the shell module. We'll do that. Uh, but then now we need to refer to the environment from inside of a workspace library. Um, and the workspace library shouldn't <laughs> shouldn't depend on an app project. We need still need to set up our NX um, boundaries, uh, lint rules, uh, but this should be one of them. No, no project, uh, no library project can depend on an app project. So that's why we might need to have this environment inside of the library. And yeah, this is really, yeah, this is Angular and modules configuring the injector and all that. It's it's a mess. It's the Angular mess of DI. Uh, so yeah, that, that's that's a bit of a pain we sometimes get when we have to use Angular modules for configuration. It kind of limits uh, some of, of the techniques we, we can use and we have to use. Okay, well, let's push to GitHub and let's go review the pull request. That will be the final step here. Or let's create the pull request rather. Ah, not that one. Here is my GitHub profile, LazyDK. Let's find this energy insights. Here it is. <laughs> ah, I want to go to the project. Work. And now I want to create a new pull request for this refactoring branch. Expecting the styles, assets, and environment libraries. Let's see what happens. So we have a GitHub Actions uh, workflow that should start running in a second. And let's look at the comment here in the chat. Interesting, uh, it's dependent on environment for production status as well as API URLs. Yeah. So what have you done? If, if you needed that in a library project, have you imported it from the app project? Hopefully not. <laughs> uh, Santosh, hello. Uh, I saw your live stream earlier about Stencil. That was really nice with David, I think he was from France, right? Really nice session. Thank you for that. And Serkan says hello to Santosh. And let's see what we have here. Okay, so something failed. Let's see what it is. Checks for this PR. Our workspace, our workflow. Lensing success, test success. Build. What happened? File replacement does not exist. Ah, okay. Yeah, it should be lib here instead of environments. So I made a mistake. Should have just used my. Now I have a. I found the extension I was missing for all these auto completions. So now I can do uh, this if I can hit the right keys. Uh, I guess I'll have to put in the file name myself, but at least the path here is working. Uh, lib. Let's try it locally. Uh, PMPM build. So now I have NX Cloud in this repo. So now I will, the result of this build locally will be sent to the NX Cloud, both the, uh, like what's happening here and the, what's the output 
and I think also the bundle, even the bundle is shipped to NX Cloud. So when the CI is running, it will uh, restore this cached output. So it will be in a matter of seconds, but we'll see that. Uh, fix file replacement configuration. Push it. Let's see the PR. Here it is running. So let's go to the checks tab. You can see them all running here and here. Which one will finish first? Now the build job should be fast because it should be cached in NX Cloud. We don't have cache for PNPM, but PNPM is really fast in itself. So even without the cache, it was 20 seconds to install all the, what was it like, 1,300 packages. <laughs> That's insane. Uh, and the build, let's see what that looks like. So it's set here, retrieved from cache. So my local build is what the output here is what's being displayed. You can see the, the timestamp is actually two minutes ago. And the time is from my local machine, 21 seconds. That's really bad. Um, but yeah, NX Cloud restored the cache. So Nice, my CI server was able to reuse my local build. And I think it would be the same for linting, actually. No, apparently not. Testing. Oh, no tests. Hmm. Oh, well. OK, so everything's good here. Let's go back to the pull request. And let's just review the changed files. So we're now using this local static file in our assets library instead of the remote one. So now normal can't break our build or our application by moving this logo away. <laughs> And the environment is now in a library instead of uh, in a local path in the uh, app project. Let me zoom in a bit here. And we have, we added one testing configuration for Jest for this environment's projects. The other um, libraries don't have TypeScript code. Here's the assets library, their folders, and this logo file from NX. Fav icon was moved into the assets library. Configuration, readme, just configuration, environments, uh, barrel file, and moving the environments file to inside of the environments library. Configuration. Configuration, auto-generated, all of it. Readme file for the styles library, the entry point for the styles library, and using the new SAS module syntax. And we saw that it actually worked. We changed the background color to uh, hideous red. And we moved the styles from the app project into our styles library in a global partial SAS file. And we added three libraries here, three workspace libraries, an assets library in the root scope, a styles library in the root scope, and an environments library in the root scope. And only one path mapping, that's for the environments library. And we had to change these assets configuration for the app project to point to the assets library. We had to change the styles uh, entry to point to their styles 
entry point SAS file. And here we change the file replacements of the library production build to point to our environments library, replacing the environment CS file with the environments prod TS file. And here's our project configurations. The assets one doesn't have any targets, but it has paths and a type. Same for styles. But for the environments, we can have tests and we have ESLint. Yeah, so everything is great. <laughs> I don't have to do this. I don't want to do this. Too many files. Uh, and now it is approved. Can't approve their own pull request. Yeah, this is an issue since I'm the only developer right now. Uh, so I'll have to change that somehow. Branching. Where where, where would I do this? Uh, I have no idea. That is strange. Can I force it somehow? I can, okay. The benefit of being the owner <laughs> of my own repo. Yeah, scratch and merch. Great, great. So now let me run my PowerShell script, invoke git prune, see if it works. Oh. It doesn't work if I started uh, the repo locally first. I have to go to the main branch and run it again. Go away, Angular compatibility compiler. You suck. Uh, so now, yeah, now I'm left with the main branch and this feature branch of the CO2 data access library, which we worked on in other episodes. So if now merged these these libraries, these three special libraries, assets, environment, styles. So now we have a tiny Angular application project. Look at this. All configuration, a few special files, since it's an app project, these two main and polyfills, and the index HTML. And then just two files here, the app component and the app module. And we could even do something about these as well. But that will be another time when we'll start to, to uh, add some features to this libraries or this uh, application. But yeah, even there's even more to be done here so that we basically only have one file with as little as possible inside of it so that we have a stable application and it won't be accidentally broken by a change that shouldn't really break anything. So now we can rest uh, eas easily at night. We can sleep well knowing that designers can and visual front-end developers can go in here and do their thing with SAS and uh, UXers can export export their assets to these folders and it won't break anything. And environments should rarely be touched. And when it is, it should be intentional, right? So this library will only ever be affected if there's a change to the environment's files. So this means that as soon as we do these last couple of things to, to the app component and module, the app project will barely ever have to be touched. So we'll always have a stable app project. This is what I did to our, yeah, your previous workspace workplace uh, project, thanks to this blog post. Yeah, let's, let's uh, thank you, Santosh. And let's have another look at this article here. Let's just scroll to the top. I'll post the URL in the chat so you can, 
read it yourself. So this is a step-by-step -step guide to everything I just did. So, so yeah, it's, it's a long read, but mostly because there's a good amount of code. And there, it's really like every step, what are you doing? There's console commands. Um, I use the like I used NX console, but uh, it's here in command line form for easy repro <laughs> easy reproducible uh, in a, in a, like you can try this out in a clean workspace by generating a clean one here first, and then running all these commands and see what's happening, and uh, looking at the configuration how it affects everything, and finally trying it out locally to see how it works. But then you can feel comfortable before doing it in your own project, maybe. So yeah, that was that was it for today. And now it is actually very much after dark in Denmark. It's 10 p.m. and uh, or 10 minutes past 10 p.m. And we didn't look at energy today, but we'll get back to this. Uh, yeah, we were in the Energy Insights project. We'll be getting back to this for sure to work on our first feature. I hope you learned something or anything, then I'm happy. So see you some other time. Bye.